All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is April 15th, 2024. If you clicked on the video, then you probably know what this is about. Um, if you saw the title, anyways. Uh, if you didn't, then what is today? What is special about today? Well, 29 years ago, This Is How We Do It by Montel Jordan was uh, number one on the Billboard charts. That's what we're celebrating, so... To Montel Jordan, this video is for you. No, just kidding. Mortal Kombat 3 came out in the arcades. And uh, what a uh, momentous event. What a, what a great day in uh, history. Uh, Mortal Kombat 3 uh, might not be the favorite of a lot of people, uh, but Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 is, and that came out six months later. <clears throat> so uh, happy almost 29th uh, birthday anniversary to uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. But uh, today... Mortal Kombat 3, 29 years ago. I've mentioned my experience in regards to seeing Mortal Kombat 3 for the first time. It was at Laser Quest downtown where I live. I walked in there, saw this beautiful cab with uh, Sindel and Shao Kahn on the side. And Mortal Kombat 3, just MK3, the logo. Oh, what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. I remember walking up to that cab and um, I remember my brother was with me. And the first thing he said was, Sub-Zero looks ri ridiculous. He's like, what's with Sub-Zero? How come he's white? How come, he, uh, how come he's got no mask on? How come he's not Chinese? So I blocked my brother out. I blocked out all the negative crap that he was talking. And I looked at it and I was just like, my goodness, this looks so crisp. And, and uh, the graphics are even more real than part two. And... Uh, you know, I watched the uh, the intro and then some of the uh, the scenes and whatnot in the beginning, and uh, I remember thinking, hmm. Um, they showed the uh, animality in the attract mode. Did they show the animality in that one? No, I don't think they did actually. But I remember seeing um, I remember seeing Sub Zero's animality, and uh, you know the glowing whatever animal, and I was thinking, uh, okay, okay, this is uh, this is interesting. But um, anyways, uh, long story short, I saw it and I didn't like it as much as Mortal Kombat 2. I really wanted to, but uh, I was ready to give this game a chance. I saw the combos and, uh, you know, I was already um, I was already super excited that it was Mortal Kombat. So because of that, I mean, just watching the uh, watching the attract mode and then finally putting some quarters in and playing as Sub-Zero... Um, I, I really liked it. And Sub-Zero's, uh, combos or whatever, I don't know how I got it. I don't know if I read it in a magazine or what, but I remember just kind of pushing the buttons and I remember, uh, getting his six, six hit combo very quickly. And, uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, enough about that. Uh, we are going to celebrate by playing through, uh, Mortal Kombat 3, uh, the Master Tower. Why not? Let's do it. I know I'm not the greatest at this game, but I'm going to have fun doing it anyways, and uh, this video is dedicated to Mortal Kombat 3. And while I play, we'll just uh, talk about whatever comes up and uh, have a good time doing it. So thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, hope you enjoy the gameplay. Um, if you're a pro and it makes you cringe, then I'm not sorry. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's play some Mortal Kombat 3. Here we go, Mortal Kombat 3. Let's watch a bit of the intro. You have been chosen to represent Earth in Mortal Kombat. Be warned, although your souls are protected against Shao Kahn's evil, your lives are not. I cannot interfere any longer as your Earth is now ruled by the Outworld Gods. These are the words of Raiden. Seeing that, I was like, damn. Raiden's not in it? Or is he? Is he a secret character? Who knows? <laughs> There's your lineup. So, in the beginning, uh, Smoke was a uh, Mortal Kombat logo. Uh, who should we use for this? Let's, uh, let's start with Kung Lao. Mm, as promised, Master Tower. Shao Kahn taunts. You'll never win. When I saw the uh, character roster in this one. 
the graveyard. Very cool level. The uh, dial-up combos. Very cool. But yeah, well, I remember when I saw the uh, roster, the first thing that I noticed also was Scorpion was missing. Obviously, a lot of people noticed that. And I personally remember thinking that uh, Cyrax was Scorpion. And I thought that because he was yellow. There was uh, another uh, robot just like him, Sector. I thought it was the uh, whole, you know, Sub-Zero Scorpion type thing. Forward, forward, back down, high punch. And I remember being pretty upset about that, thinking, ah, oh, they got rid of Scorpion, that sucks. But Cyrax, once I found out he was uh, not, in fact, Scorpion, he was a different character. Uh, he actually ended up being a pretty cool character. Cyrax is, uh, to this day, one of my favorites from this game. Uh, the uh, different difficulty levels, too. That was really cool. And it played nice. Another cool feature about this one. Wins. Uh, the voice also, still cool, still Shao Kahn. Uh, seeing Liu Kang though, he just, he didn't look right to me. <laughs> I think I mentioned that in another video, he looked like an old man, but it makes sense, you know, the uh, time has gone by, Liu Kang is aged. This another pit, um, pit fatality. I can't remember what uh, Kung Lao's input is for the uh, pit fatality. So you're not going to see that. But the pit three is very cool. A cabal subway. There was a lot of cool things about this game uh, when I first saw it. Good use of blood. You'll notice I'm doing a lot of roundhouse kicks. When the opponent runs towards you, you get your timing right, and you can almost always hit them with a uh, roundhouse kick. I wish I knew uh, Kung Lao's pit fatality. I wish I memorized it, but again, a lot of moves from this one I didn't memorize either. Uh, just because uh, it's been a lot of time, it's been a long time since I really played the hell out of it. But uh, I used to uh, play the heck out of this on Super Nintendo. I remember uh, purposely renting, oh shoot, I missed it. Uh, renting a Sega Saturn just to play an arcade, uh, arcade perfect in my opinion at the time version of this game. Uh, we did own it for Super Nintendo. But yeah, truth be told, after seeing this in the arcade, I remember... Ooh, look at that. I remember uh, going home after and uh, throwing on Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> An animality done to me, that's kind of cool. Now imagine it's your first time seeing this. And you're, uh, I was 14, 15 years old when this came out. One of the um, one of the things I loved about it were the finishing moves, obviously, like everybody else. So seeing an animality was uh, it was interesting. I remember Sub Zero's animality was the first one that I ever saw. I wasn't overly impressed, um, but it was still cool because it was a new it was a new kind of finisher, right? That made all the difference in the world. So again, if you can time time that roundhouse kick, you'll get them every time they run in. But you gotta get them to a run in. Oh. Shiva had an awesome combo. That beautiful seven hit combo right there. One of the uh, coolest looking in this game, I find. Oh, could have got him again. Oh. 
Now, I can beat this one pretty easily with Sindel, um, with Cyrax and Sub-Zero, but let's play through, uh, let's try some of the characters that we don't use very often. Uh, first time seeing Jax with metal arms, I thought it was cool. His roundhouse kick, pretty crappy. <laughs> Let's see how many uh, times I can muff up a uh, combo. <laughs> I was happy to see Jax again. I was happy that he uh, still had some of his moves from MK2. Uh, his fatalities, his one is uh, very silly, obviously. The uh, one where he turns into a giant. Oh. All right, maybe we get a win here. The introduction of uh, Mercies was another uh, cool, another cool feature. Uh, the AI in this wasn't uh, extremely hard like a lot of people thought MK2 was. Uh, fatality there. Hold block, push up, down, forward, up, release, and push block again. Victory. Fatality. There's another fatality, I think, is run block, run, run, low kick. Cyrax, there you have it. Or as I thought it was uh, Scorpion in the beginning. Another uh, cheap move like the Harpoon almost. Instead of a uh, Harpoon, you got the Mets, right? Back back low punch is the Harpoon for Scorpion. Back back low kick is the net for Cyrax. Trying to throw the opponent. Uh, this kind of pointless. I'm running to you. Time it right and you'll get it. Mess up and you're screwed. Get him. There you go. Oh. New characters when this one came out. Um, I was pretty unimpressed with his uh, his look. He just kind of looks like a uh, thin. I found it was too thin. He didn't look menacing enough. He's got some good moves. Though. He actually ends up. Uh, he actually turned out to be a really cool character. I am definitely playing like I had just. Uh, Played for the first time. Fight. Yeah, his moves were cool. He reflected. Back, 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 high kick. And flex the enemy's projectile. at this game. It's almost like it's 1995 again. Let's try Kano, another character I don't use very often against the computer. Fight. 
one low kick for three seconds, let go. You can't throw the opponent on the master tower. Go to is always sub zero for the most part, and Cyrax. But yeah, the uh, Kano being back in the game after MK2 was a lot of a lot of fun. It was cool to see. I was happy about that. I was also happy to see uh, Sonya back in this, uh, played by a different actress, whereas Kung uh, Kung Kung Lao, uh, whereas Kano was still played by Richard Divizio. It's uh, fatality. Instead of ripping your heart out, rips your skeleton out. Fatality. I always had uh, mixed feelings about that one. One. Fight. I say that because I like it, but I don't like it. Uh, his heart pull fatality, obviously, in my opinion, is way better. But it was cool that he was still doing something similar. Uh, the stages in this one, really good. Really cool. Uh, Sindel is another uh, great character. He is another great character. Definitely one of my favorites from this, uh, this team and Ultimate MK3. Cool that they kept the uh, friendship and babalities in this because with friendships, fatalities, babalities, hit fatalities, uh, they each had a ton of different ways to finish the opponent, which was really cool. that hair weighed a ton, uh, according to the actress who played her. Kano finally got to use his uh, laser, which is uh, cool, cool to see that. There you go, low punch, block, block, high kick. And you actually got a reward for beating the uh, Master Tower too, which was another uh, cool feature. Because uh, the Master Tower is pretty hard, you know, if you don't know what the heck you're doing, it's, it's pretty hard for sure. Timing thing. But yeah, anyways, as for uh, seeing this in the arcade, uh, I only saw it a handful of times, uh, like originals, because uh, within six months, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 came out. And uh, when that came out, that was the only version I'd ever seen in the arcade, so. Sub-Zero was always my uh, character of choice. Let's uh, finish this off. <laughs> Let's try to finish this off. Um, I love that Sub-Zero has the uh, all the new moves in this. And you know what? I was, I was a little thrown off by his look also. But because he still played like Sub-Zero, I thought he was an awesome character. He was fun to use. One thing about uh, Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat 2 is you can never get the um, the ice to hit the opponent. Whereas in this one, they let you hit the opponent with the ice. And uh, when I say the opponent, I mean the computer opponent. It's actually possible in this one. Which is cool. In uh, MK2, they always duck it. Fatalities were uh, 
weren't the greatest, but they are still pretty cool nonetheless. Block, block, run, block, run. I just found Sub-Zero an easy character to use. His Fatality was easy to do. His Pit Fatality... His, uh... No, not terrible either. He has his Ice Shower, which was cool. Like, different, all these different ways to freeze the opponent was cool. Feel nice to do. And I know a lot of uh, a lot of people shared my thoughts on the uh, looks of Sub Zero. <laughs> you know, the whole uh, David Hasselhoff thing. Graphic capabilities, the, uh, the fatalities just they seemed they seemed lazy to me. Uh, the animation, the body parts floating and such. So with Cyrax, you just throw a lot of nets. And when he gets close to you, you uh, roundhouse kick them or you throw nets. Church stage, another very uh, cool stage. Wins. Round two. Fight. Overall, you know what? Overall, this game, when it first came out, uh, there were a lot of things you could complain about and cry about and whatnot, but there were also so many things that uh, made this game excellent. And uh, it was very ambitious for the, uh, for the time. And then, of course, with the uh, Ultimate MK3 coming out shortly after, there's really uh, no reason to complain. <laughs> Cyrax wins fatality. Fatality. And it definitely looked more polished. Fight. But yeah, the opposing ninjas, ketchup and mustard. <laughs> I remember when I was younger thinking that uh, those clouds that are flying across the uh, moon, when I first saw them, I was like, oh, is that, does that mean there's a secret character or something on this stage? But you'll notice that the clouds fly by every time you play on the stage. And I always watched out for, like, a witch or, uh, you know, a rocket or whatever to fly by that moon. I remember wondering if that's how, you know, that secret character in the middle, who smoked, obviously, I was wondering if that's how you, uh, if that is associated to how you find her. Of course, uh, you know, it didn't take long before I realized that it had nothing to do with, uh, with smoke appearing in this game. Fatality. Well, because of the uh, the amount of secrets in MK2, I was just looking for a million secrets in this. Another thing in this one, when you play the uh, and this, these are all like uh, things that I noticed when I was younger when I first saw the game, kind of thing. Uh, when you play the two-player matches and you input those codes, at the time I wasn't too hyped about that either. I don't 
don't know. I don't know what it was. I just it didn't feel like something you had to search for, something you remember. That was all just like guessing, I thought. And uh, it was less appealing to me than actually like, you know, a smoke or jade appearing behind a tree in the living forest kind of thing. And that was cool. of that in this fatality so like the the noob cybot battle you know it's just it's one of your choices after beating the game right like, actually no that's not even that's not even the case in this one i'm getting it mixed up with ultimate mk3 so the noob cybot battle was all based on one of the codes that you put in and as far as i know i think it's two rounds but you can only you can only fight Noob Saibot by putting in a code in a two-player match. And again, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Because Mortal Kombat 2, you had to win 50 battles in a row. Like, it was something crazy. Whereas in this one, it was just like, you put in a code and you got it. Ooh, she straight <laughs> into the subway. And that, that was cool too, the inclusion of, uh, of that, that was, uh, that was another cool one. At least we're getting to uh, see a lot of the characters, as if it's the uh, first time. Shiva, awesome character. It was cool seeing her because, uh, you know, there was Goro and Kotaro, the first two. Shokan Part 3 that wasn't a uh, boss character. You know, she's obviously slim, so uh, she doesn't look as menacing as uh, Goro or Kitaro. But it was still really cool to use a, a Shokan in this one. of that move too is really cool. She can stop doing it any day now. And she poses instead of doing anything, so that's interesting. <laughs> Alright. Who else? Sonya. Let's try Sonya. Is Sonya having a bicycle kick with the return of her? Same moves as in part one. So the uh, roundhouse kick only works when when they are running at you. Ah, or if they, uh, you know, jump in at you. You gotta love that the scream of uh, Shiva's. The fact that she does that is kind of annoying. And seeing her do a bicycle kick too is pretty cool. Yeah, broke into a combo right in mid uh, roundhouse kick. So that's interesting. Liu Kang. I'm getting through a lot of characters here. Once again, when I first saw Liu Kang, I thought, uh, man, he looks old. The, um, even the form on that uh, kick. Uh, his, uh, flying kick, I thought, looked... 
form wasn't as, as good as the uh, this form in MK2 or even MK1. But you know what? The uh, all the uh, all the things that I'm picking at right now are all uh, things that I picked at as uh, as a teenager when I was younger, right? You know, truth be told, I I love this game. I love everything about it now. It's all just the, uh, the memories are just coming back. That's all. That seven hit combo was brutal. I just felt like a champ pulling that off. Alright, Cabal. Another cool character. When you find out he's a part of the Black Dragon, which is funny because he's also played by the other Black Dragon, Kano. <laughs> his fatality, too. Yeah, when he reveals his face. That was that was a cool one. Different. It wasn't bloody, and as kids we wanted all the blood in the world, right? So it was a little underwhelming when I first saw it, but again it was still neat because it was uh, something different. There you have it. the uh, easier fatalities to pull off. Run, block, 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 high kick. So that was cool. Uh, Motaro. When I first saw Motaro. Oops. Um, I like I like seeing Motaro. I thought he looked menacing and huge. I liked, uh, I liked hearing Steve Ritchie say Motaro. I remember thinking it was really cheap. <laughs> but I mean, that's, uh, you know, sub-bosses of Mortal Kombat uh, 1 and 2, I thought, were extremely cheap also. So, I think we've used everybody. So let's, uh, let's do it with Kung Lao. There you have it, all 15 characters. Yeah. Kung Lao, I really like his... Uh, oh, he's 51%. That was kind of cheap. I really like that combo. Looks good. Feels good to pull off. That didn't sound right. Tough time on Motaro. <laughs> Let's try that again. Now, do I remember the first time beating Motaro? No, I don't. I think the first time I beat him was uh, on Super Nintendo. Basically just a lot of jump kicking and running combos. And the thing I like about this one too is that even if they block the start of your combo, you can still hit them with the end of it. So that was always cool. with those uh, fireballs. It would be a pain in the neck. Now apparently there's a quicker way to beat them where you purposely screw up your combo like mid midway so that you just keep running up and you hit them three times or whatever. But I've never uh, never really uh, tried that method. Thing I noticed about Shao Kahn in the beginning was that uh, he announces the fight still, whereas he didn't. 
MK2. Another thing I didn't like about, about Shao Kahn in this one is that he doesn't have his own stage. His stage is the pit, pit three. I mean, technically, I guess this is his stage, but there was no, um, you know, no throne or anything in the back like in MK2. So it always made me wonder if they just ran out of memory or what the deal was. But the pattern with Shao Kahn wasn't uh, too bad for this one. Whereas in Ultimate, it's a little harder, I thought. And there you have it, finally. We used all 15 characters in that playthrough. Uh, but at least I got to talk about it a bit. And uh, kind of relive my childhood through now through playing with every character. So one thing about beating it on the master stage is that you have a special ending, which hints at <clears throat> Ultimate MK3. And I did like the uh, the original artwork in this one, as opposed to uh, new MK3, where it's just the uh, character verse screen pose for the, uh, for the character, but anyways, there you have it, 29 years ago, this was introduced to the world, and I tell you, life hasn't been the same since, <laughs> and there you have it, there's the uh, special screen when you beat the master, master tower, more combat, fall of 95, and there certainly was, the case introduction of the uh, seven new characters new and old uh, scorpion made his return and uh, that was the highlight of uh, ultimate mk3 for me but there you have it a uh, playthrough of mortal kombat 3 a happy anniversary to uh, mortal kombat 3 these guys really uh, created something brilliant this design team Incredible. What they did for what they managed to accomplish is uh, it's unbelievable. Mortal Kombat coming out in '92, MK3 in '93, or MK2 in '93, and then MK3 in '95. Unbelievable. I know <laughs> it's it's crazy, but these are the memories that are that I associate with. Um, teen years, my childhood. Uh, these are some of the best memories. And I know it's just a game, but, you know, every time I play it, I'm transported back into the 90s, which was just such a, a great time in life, a great time in history. You know, the evolution of these, these video games started really, uh, really you know, becoming advanced and, and just... And then the preview for the movie at the end of the game, too. What a cool feature. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Mortal Kombat 3. 29 years later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your life. <laughs>